Uh, Donald Trump is the first former president to face a criminal trial in American history, and some pundits describe his legal situation as a constitutional crisis. And as a jury deliberates his fate on 34 felony charges, it begs the question, what are the national implications? Should he be found guilty? Could a felon be a major party's presidential candidate? Here to help answer those questions, Catherine J. Ross, constitutional law professor at George Washington University. Thanks so much for giving us some time. And listen, I know people are riveted by the trial. We're all on verdict watch. We've been through high profile cases before, many of them uh, in this country. But it, in many ways, the, the, the verdict is important. Uh, but really, the main story is what impact, if any, will this have on November? No matter which way this thing goes, Donald Trump is still the nominee and still could be the next president of the United States in any practical or legal matter. If, huge if, he is a convicted felon, does anything about his political prospects constitutionally change? Nothing changes constitutionally because the, um, the Constitution has very few requirements for the presidency that you'd be born here, that you'd be over 35 years old. It doesn't say anything about being a convicted felon or whether you must be free to come and live in the District of Columbia rather than in uh, uh, being incarcerated in New York State. Um, so, and of course, he can't pardon himself for a conviction in New York State. Uh, but I think it has enormous political implications. Actually, whichever way the verdict comes out, there will be people who are not satisfied. And we have survey data that tells us that many people who plan to vote for President Trump have told pollsters, majority have said, not going to change my vote if he's convicted. Now, whether that is something that they say when the whole thing seems remote and they're talking to a pollster and they want to communicate that they are very committed to the former president, uh, whether that will change as we get closer to November, whether people have a sense of the seriousness of what it means to pull that voting le lever uh, as they approach the voting booth or fill out their mail application, we really don't know. So there isn't a constitutional crisis, but there might be some sort of political or institutional crisis. And just to amplify that, there could be a constitutional crisis if once supporters accept his delegitimization of the judicial system and many of our other institutions and simply refuse to accept what happens in the court or in uh, the election. And, and, and let me just understand, I, I, obviously the political ramifications will, will, be, will be fascinating uh, e either way, but we do live and, and make sure I'm, I want you to kind of walk me through this. We do live in a country where if you are a convicted felon, you cannot vote for president. But we're potentially heading toward a situation where a convicted felon could be president. Help me understand that. It's mind boggling. Let me just first make a small correction. Whether felons can vote or not depends on the state they live in. Trump lives in Florida, where felons do not have the right to vote. But there's nothing that says if you want run for office, you have to vote or you have to vote for yourself. So he's just going to be short one vote if he's a convicted felon and he can't vote in Florida. Uh, I'm a little mind blown. And, you know, I, I, I think probably some of our viewers are as like, well, because you wouldn't think that this this would be where we are in the first place. But then to think that he could be sworn in as president and, and be a convicted felon at the same time. And not only that, he could be in a prison in New York because there have been other uh, elected officials, usually at the local level, and not so many of them, who have served from jail. And so again, not only can you be a convicted felon and still be the president of America, you could be sitting in a jail cell behind bars and still serve as commander in chief. I just want to make sure I'm, I'm fully clear on, on, on where you are. I, I am at a loss for words to explain to you how this can actually be, but in part it's because of our lack of imagination as a country, the founding fathers' lack of imagination. They never considered the possibility 
that somebody could be in jail and be president because they thought of the presidency as reserved for people of unassailable moral character. And again, um, I, and some would say lack of, you say lack of imagination, some would say their optimism right. or their belief in democracy, you know, allow them to not consider the possibility. So tomato, tomato, <laughs> depending on your, on your point of view. Um, I, I, I like your breathing. <laughs> Good, because I, I think that's, I, I'm, thank you for yeah. coming on. We're, we're out of time, but I, I think it was important to help clear up, the, not clear, but at least to discuss the possibility that if he's convicted, what that means constitutionally in his ability to serve. And the answer is, it means nothing. Uh, and, and whether he's, con, you know, if he's convicted, even if he's in jail, he right. can still serve. And that's and it just... it really is based on the morality of the voters. Of it. It does that right. sit well with you, yes or no? And then you go from there. If your president could be signing, like doing things from a jail cell. Right. Um, These are personal and political choices, values, not a constitutional crisis. Our values as a country and as a people um, and I would just like to say this is a time when we should not let imagination fail us mm -hmm. because we have seen repeatedly over the last several years things that were unimaginable have happened or continue to happen. Right. Well, as a we constitutional law professor, I know you are busy. <laughs> and I just, yeah, thank you so much, Catherine J. Ross. We really appreciate you.